Welcome to Living Green. Did you know each household annually consumes about 10,600 kilowatts of electricity, which costs households over $1,000 each year? A whopping 1.8 tons of coal is burned annually to provide electricity to a home. The cost to produce energy is going up, and that means higher utility bills. On today's show, we'll learn about ways you can conserve energy within your home. We'll explore some energy efficient features of a home in a new neighborhood. Next, we will visit with a utility specialist as she conducts an energy audit of a home. Then, we'll explore the option of installing a solar water heater. Finally, we'll examine energy rebates that are made available to customers of a local utility company. Our daily activities in our home require energy. Think about it, preparing meals, washing clothes, Taking showers and listening to your stereo takes energy. Just sitting in the comfort of your home, you may have the AC running with the lights on while watching TV. Where does electricity come from when we flip on a switch? In the US, roughly 50% of the electricity comes from coal fired power plants, 20% from nuclear, and 18% from natural gas. We may not think about where our energy comes from but people do notice how much energy costs when they get their utility bill. With new construction, developers and contractors have many options to make a home more energy efficient. We met up with Dr. Pierce Jones, director of University of Florida's Program for Resource Efficient Communities. Pierce gave us a tour of a model home and lot that is energy efficient. One of the things that I particularly like about this development is the fact that the developers left uh, a lot of the original tree cover. This was a fully wooded site when they came in here. And when they laid out the lots, they, they left a buffer of trees. Uh, and since the whole project is pretty much oriented north-south, those trees happen to be primarily uh, along the west and east sides of the property. So from an energy point of view, what that means is those trees provide shade uh, in the morning and in the afternoon when the load on the homes is greatest. And uh, I think when you look at the house, you can see the shade pattern that those trees are providing. And um, of course, that's load that the house doesn't have to deal with. So your air conditioning system doesn't have to deal with that load. And air conditioning is, in Florida, the primary consumer of energy in a home. So in addition to the trees providing shade on the home, we also have designed the house to have porches on the east and west sides that shade the windows. And you can see that uh, even though this is morning and this is the west side of the house, that that's a fully shaded window. And there's only a very brief period of time during the day when that load gets into the home. Um, very significant advantages when we've done the energy analysis in this home. This, this porch really provides uh, tremendous benefits. Another feature um, of the home is that all of the windows are low E, double pane low E windows, uh, which are very energy efficient. The um, uh, low E is especially important in Florida uh, because what it effectively does is exclude infrared uh, wavelengths of light. So again, that energy stays outside the home as opposed to coming in where the air conditioning system would have to deal with it. In addition to the outside, the inside of a house can be designed and managed to conserve energy. We'll mark in addition to the doors and windows, uh, obviously the walls uh, need to be well insulated uh, for an energy efficient home. In this house, uh, we used a product called EcoBlock that is uh, more generally referred to as an insulated concrete form product. And you can notice that the walls are thick and you might have assumed that it was concrete block but in fact uh, it was made of, of this product which uh, has two inches of expanded polystyrene on both the inside and the outside and this interior cavity 
this is put up like Legos and then that cavity uh, with steel in place is filled with concrete. So you have no voids in the wall. Um, of course it's an extremely strong wall being essentially cast in place concrete and uh, of course the thermal properties are tremendous. The R value of these walls is roughly 25 which is, uh, is very high, a very good value. Now what is R value? Insulation is rated in terms of resistance to heat flow or R value. Pretend this is a section of your wall. The higher the R value, the greater the resistance to heat flow. Adding more insulation means less cooled or heated air will escape from your room. One other thing I suppose I should mention while we're standing here uh, in this area is that all of the ductwork, the air conditioning and heating ductwork that's in the house is in conditioned space as opposed to having those ducts running through the attic where they're going to be exposed to hot and cold temperatures uh, which can generate losses. Uh, instead we put the, the ductwork in a chase that you can see above the kitchen here causes the temperature, the external temperature of the ducts to be uh, closer to the temperature of the room which is what you want to maintain. So once you've got the thermal insulation in place around the building envelope, um, uh, then you're going to provide conditioning, air conditioning and heating. And the thermostat is uh, located here pretty much in the center of the living area. And uh, of course that's a representation of what the air temperature is in the room. And the, the system's going to turn on and turn off according to what it senses right here. And one of the things that can help in terms of there being cold spots and hot spots in the home is the addition of ceiling fans which distribute the air and uh, cause a more comfortable distribution of temperatures in the room. The um, windows, the doors, the walls, but we can't forget about the ceiling. Attic insulation is probably the most important insulation that you have to have in the home for energy efficiency. Uh, this house has R30, which actually is fairly standard for a well-insulated home uh, in Florida. Um, and I, I'd like to make the point that, that the ductwork that I mentioned earlier, the, the fact that all of the air conditioning and heating ductwork is in this chase, the attic insulation is above that chase. And that's what sort of insulates that duct space from the attic space where temperatures can be very high in the summertime. In fact, over 140 degrees would not be uncommon. So that's a, a very important element to, to insulating and making a home um, very energy efficient. In addition to having the ductwork in conditioned space, uh, this home has a dedicated mechanical room that's in conditioned space where the air handler is located uh, as well as the uh, hot water system. This is on the second floor of the home, fairly near the center of the home, and of course that makes for compact runs of both the ductwork and the hot water lines. Uh, those are important contributors to the energy efficiency of the home. Other important features of the home uh, for energy efficiency is the lighting, and uh, tremendous strides have been made in making compact fluorescent lighting uh, readily available, and these will require a third to a fourth as much energy to give you the same light as incandescent lighting. And this house uh, has only compact fluorescent or regular fluorescent lighting throughout, and uh, we think that's going to be a major benefit from an energy efficiency point of view. Okay, it's great if you purchased a home with all these features to conserve energy. But what about retrofitting a home? What can you do to make older homes more energy efficient? To learn more about what homeowners can do, we met up with Amy Karpus, a utility energy expert who helps homeowners create energy efficient homes. She's conducting an energy audit for a homeowner who asked Amy to come out and evaluate her home. Hi, my name is Rose Fagler and uh, we bought an older house about three years ago and we're interested in getting um, some tips on conservation because we're getting ready to do renovations to the house. Uh, we wanted to uh, have a benchmark, so to speak, understand where we are with our consumption right now and then as we're doing the renovations, make sure that we do them um, so that they're energy efficient and then we can 
uh, look back and see you know, how much we save so that we can justify the expense. There are many things people can do within their home to save energy. Amy gave us some important tips. Okay, so this is the air handler unit for the house. Uh -huh. It's the biggest energy consumer in the home, usually year round. A uh, few things that you should check when you're looking at it is you need to look, turn the unit on, and check for airflow around the unit. Any place where you can see here that the tape has let go, okay, uh -huh. that's where the air is coming out into the garage or into the closet in the house, and it's not going into the system like it needs to. Therefore, you're wasting energy. Okay? Um, plus, you're also introducing anything in the garage, chemicals, exhaust from the car, anything can be pulled in this way and be distributed through the house. Okay? So making sure that the air conditioning unit and the, the whole air handler itself is well sealed is a good thing to do. Another thing to look at, one of the most important things to do with your air handler on a regular basis is to check the filter. Okay? Changing out the filter every month, if it's a monthly filter, or changing it out every two or every three, whatever the filter requires. Um, however, if you've got one of the longer lasting filters, you still want to check it monthly, every other month, just to make sure that anything you've been doing in the house has not clogged up the filter. Um, so what happens when the filter clogs up? Well, when the filter clogs up, what's happening is the air is coming back from the house into the unit down here, and the blower fan is pushing it through the air handler, either through the furnace section here in the winter, or through the air conditioning system here, and then back into the home. So if the filter is clogged, it's not being able to breathe. It cannot allow the air to pass through into the unit, and then the unit has to work harder and harder and harder to try to pull the air through. So changing out that filter and checking it every month is a very important thing to do. Another thing to keep in mind in, in your home is freezers and refrigerators, especially if you have extra refrigerators and freezers that you don't have inside conditioned space. Uh, you need to be careful of that because units cost a lot more to work in the garage to run them. You want to check the seals on your refrigerator and freezer to make sure they're not leaking, you don't have any moisture buildup around the seal, which will really indicate, like here, that there's uh, possibly a problem with the seal. Checking for mold and mildew is a really good indicator. Another thing is, is you have to remember that underneath most refrigerators, or in the back of some, there are coils that expel the heat from the refrigerator. And those need to be cleaned once every six months or so. If you've got a lot of pets in the house, you may need to do it once a quarter because all the fur clogs up the coils and then the unit cannot expel the heat. What's the easiest way to clean the coils? Well, um, one of the easiest ways is there's a small plate usually on the front of units, and this plate comes off. You have to be very gentle with it. Um, and the coils you need to clean are up underneath. But before you do that, remember you want to unplug the refrigerator so that nothing turns on while you're under there. All right? And you just use a vacuum? or You can use a vacuum. There are specialized lint brushes for cleaning underneath refrigerators that are real long brushes to get all the way to the back of the coils. 